Hi everybody, APA family, APA friends. It's so great to be here today. This is my studio at the Indiana University Jacobs School of Music in Bloomington. Um, I just started here on the faculty in August and I'm having a blast so far teaching here and being back in Indiana. Um, uh, I recently recorded the four Chopin impromptus for Steinway's new online only series, digital only series called Steinway Classics. Um, and so I'm here today just, just to talk about, talk, talk about how um, how much I love the Chopin impromptus, how much I love the music of Chopin. Um, it's a, uh, it was a COVID project for me, actually. The four Chopin impromptus, as most of us know, include the fantasy impromptu, the very famous fantasy impromptu, which I had even never played in my life. So, so this was a completely new project for me. But I want to talk about why I was drawn to the other three Chopin impromptus as well. I think they're very underappreciated, um, underplayed, uh, I think largely because the Fantasy Impromptu gained so much popularity because the middle section of the Fantasy Impromptu was turned into the very popular song called I'm Always Chasing Rainbows, which was used in a few Broadway shows. One of them was The Ziegfeld Girl with Judy Garland. So it was written in 1917, um, adapted in 1917, uh, and made into this popular song. Just a beautiful, beautiful melody, which we all know. So it's just a, a gorgeous sort of unending, spinning, melodic display that I think really um, captures what is magic about the Chopin impromptus in that, uh, for me, Chopin is one of the first composers that really made the piano talk and speak mm -hmm. in such a human way. He, uh, he loved bel canto opera, so I think so much of his music, especially the, the more melodic elements of his music, really um, are, he's aiming to imitate singers. He's aiming to Im imitate the human voice, how we naturally speak and talk. So it's just so incredibly communicative. And the impromptus are examples of both his virtuoso writing, because he was a great virtuoso pianist, and also his melodic writing, where again, he captures this very human aspect. So the, the definition of the impromptu is basically something that is basically improvised. So it's, or it's, it's, a, it's a form of music that is sort of without form. It's aiming to give the illusion that it's being just composed off the cuff. So um, Chopin's impromptus have somewhat of a form, which we generally call ABA, where you'll have two outer sections that are basically identical, and then there's a middle section, and it's these middle sections of the Chopin impromptus where he just... He just uh, taps into his amazing skill of writing melody and capturing, again, the human voice and the human um, speech through sound. So, but uh, some of the virtuoso writing also is very, very, I think, engaging and also uh, melodic in nature. So the, the first one, for example, opens with um, this, this kind of uh, trill turn and just unfolds into this, um, again, very sort of melodic, but at the same time, virtuoso writing. You see, the, the twists and turns are extremely vocal and melodic, but it's something that you could not actually sing as a singer. Um, but, um, and then also the, the second impromptu closes with a, um, uh, with, a, with a section that is just this spun out, um, incredible virtuoso writing, uh, but again, so incredibly beautiful. So I'm trying to think of a good place to start for this. Um, let's see, okay. So you see, it's, it's uh, again, it's it's very beautiful and very vocal, but it's not something that you could actually sing. This uh, these melodies lie in the middle sections of the impromptu. So, but these, um, I think. There's, there's at the same time in the virtuoso writing, there's something so incredibly human and expressive about it. And that's what has always drawn me to the impromptus and Chopin's music in general, the ballades, the waltzes, the mazurkas, they're all so incredibly um, deeply emotionally connected. 
um, again, because he's, he's, commuting, he's um, communicating something so very human in this writing. So, so I want to give a couple examples of some of the middle sections of the other impromptus as well. So um, the, uh, the first impromptu um, has this, uh, it, it transitions out of the virtuoso writing into this beautiful kind of section that transitions from major to minor a lot. So we have... And then further in the section, he skips to this, this uh, beautiful um, melodic fragment that he brings back several times. heard there that that kind of embellishment on the melody is something very impromptu like very capturing this idea of improv improvisation and uh, embellishing something that he had already stated and again all revolving around the idea of human speech and and uh, singing and the sincerity of the human spirit being so uh, beautifully communicated the third impromptu i think also um in a way sounds almost the most improvised of the four impromptus. Um, it, it's very, um, it starts off very strange and kind of wandering and it's very chromatic. So the, the idea of it being a very simply um, um, singable melody, like the I'm Always Chasing Rainbows from the Fantasy Impromptu is not so prevalent in the third impromptu. It's a bit more um, wandering is the word that comes to mind. So it starts, opens uh, in the lower register of the piano like this. So it's centered around a very, um, uh, a very established key, but the, what happens in the right hand is so, again, very wandering, very um, uh, kind of searching for something, and it gives off a very improv improvised uh, quality. Um, and then um, w one of my favorite melodies is the opening of the second impromptu, which I, I think is just so um, very um, intimate and very touching. So this is how the second impromptu opens. Just, I, it just touches me so deeply. It's just so um, beautiful and again, sincere. Sincere is something that, a word that often comes to mind for me with Chopin because it's just such honest music and it's so easy to, to connect with. And I think that's one of the things that has helped him stand the test of time among classical composers with audiences. And he, of course, he, he wrote almost exclusively piano music as well. So he's so connected to the piano. He was a pianist himself. He just knew how to communicate what this piano could do and turn it into a human voice. So, um, and of course, the fantasy impromptu, we all know and love. Uh, I demonstrated I'm Always Chasing Rainbows, but this is how the, the opening unfolds. So once again, I think this, this very virtuoso writing has such a vocal quality to it as well. And, and I'm always communicating this to my students as well, especially in the repertoire of Chopin. The, the, he writes, he'll write little cadenzas, little embellishments that are little notes on the page as opposed to the big notes. And I'm always telling them, 
this is just as vocal as everything else. Every note in Chopin is sung. Nothing is important, uh, nothing is um, unimportant, and uh, nothing should be glossed over. It's all, it's all to serve this idea of singing and melody, even the fast virtuoso stuff. So I think the impromptus are such great examples of this. Um, interestingly to note, this recording on the Steinway Classic series, uh, which is Steinway's uh, newish series, which is um, online only, was made in conjunction with me also recording for their Spirio catalog. I've done a lot of recordings for their, um, their new Spirio, the player piano mechanism, which they've developed so incredibly well um, to, to recreate uh, and be able to play back the, the idiosyncrasies and very specific gradations of pedaling and sound and articulation that a pianist will do in a live performance. They can recreate that. So it's, uh, it's played back just how the pianist played it. It's just, it's really remarkable to be in that process, record something and then stand back away from the piano and have it play back. And it really sounds just like you. It's, it's just, it's really stunning. So, so that's all done. The Chopin impromptus are available on the Spirio catalog for those of you who might have a Spirio piano and can um, download the catalog. And then these are also available as a sound recording on their Steinway Classics series. So um, now I would love to, to do a complete performance of one of the impromptus, one of my favorites, which is the first, which again, I think demonstrates such a beautiful balance of his virtuoso writing and this, this uh, great, incredible, almost unmatched skill at writing melody. So this is the first impromptu of Chopin in A flat major.
So thanks to all of you for being here with me in, again in my studio in Indiana. Um, just, just loving it here so much. Um, and uh, enjoy the Chopin Impromptus. Uh, link is available on the screen uh, in front of you and um, uh, I hope you enjoy them as much as I do and as much as I enjoyed making this recording. Thank you so much.